Hello, first grade. Today we are reading one of my favorite stories, Rumpelstiltskin. Our key vocabulary for today are boasting, claim, clever, pity, and succeed. Boasting is a verb and it means bragging, proudly telling about something. Isaiah would not stop boasting about his first place ribbon from the talent show. Claim is a noun that mean, that is a statement that something is yours. The boy made a claim that the skateboard found behind the school belonged to him. Clever is an adjective and it means smart, able to think and figure things out quickly. The clever girl was often the first to solve the math problems. Pity is a noun, and it's a feeling of sympathy or sadness for someone who is unhappy. Deja felt pity for the new student who did not have many friends. Succeed is a verb, and it means to reach a goal or to do well. Chef Jim hoped to succeed in winning the prize for best dessert. What was the name of the fairy tale that we heard last? Sleeping Beauty. Let's review the characteristics of fairy tales. Are the following elements characteristics of fairy tales? So I'm gonna list some things and if it is something that all fairy tales have, you are going to tell me yes. And if it is something that not all fairy tales have or that fairy tales don't have at all, you're gonna do give me a thumbs down, okay? A once upon a time setting. Yeah, that's a characteristic of a fairy tale. What about magical characters like fairies? Yeah, that's another characteristic of a fairy tale. How about nonfiction? Are fairy tales nonfiction? Mm. Nonfiction means that it is real and that it normally has facts in it. It's not for entertainment. Fairy tales are not nonfiction. They are fiction. What about Greek gods? Do fairy tales have Greek gods in them? No. What about problems and solutions? Yeah, all fairy tales have a problem and a solution. How about ending in happily ever after? Yeah, that is a characteristic of a fairy tale. So we are going to look at a couple of pictures and you are going to tell me if it's fantasy or reality. Reality means that it could happen in real life. Okay, what do you see in this picture? I see a royal family. I see a king, a queen, a baby, and then some cats. Is that something that could happen in real life? Yeah, that is something that could happen in real life. Is there anything in this picture that is imaginary or that could not happen in real life? I don't see anything. So would this be a fantasy or a reality, this picture? It would be reality, right? Because there's not anything there that is imaginary or that couldn't really happen in real life. What about this picture? What do you see? I see a queen and a baby and a fairy. So what parts of this picture could happen in real life? The queen and the baby. Is there anything in this picture that is imaginary or that couldn't happen in real life? The fairy. So is this picture an example of fantasy or reality? Fantasy. What do you see in this picture? This was when Sleeping Beauty was asleep for 100 years. So what in this picture could be real? Well, there could be a princess and she could be asleep, but she couldn't be asleep for 100 years, right? So that part is imaginary or 
couldn't happen in real life. So is this picture fantasy or reality? It's fantasy. In our previous read aloud, we heard about spinning wheels. And there is a spinning wheel in this story too. Remember that spinning wheels are tools that are used to spin thread and yarn. The spindle is the stick-like tool on the spinning wheel where the thread or yarn goes after it is spun. So our key vocabulary, we have boasting, claim, clever, pity, and succeed. I want you to listen carefully for what a spinning wheel has to do with the character's problem and what happens um, to solve that problem. Once upon a time, there was a poor miller who had a beautiful daughter. She was so beautiful and clever that he could not help boasting about her. A miller is a person who grinds grain to make flour. And this miller boasts or speaks very proudly about his daughter, saying that she's clever, meaning that she's smart and able to think, um, think things out quickly. One day, the miller happened to come before the king, and to impress the king, he began boasting about his daughter. And before he knew it, he found himself saying that the daughter was so amazing and so wonderful, why, she could even spin gold out of straw. That, said the king, is a talent worth having. Bring your daughter to me, and let us see what she can do. So remember that thread and yarn are made by spinning plant parts or animal wool. Do you think that the daughter is really actually able to spin gold out of straw? Probably not. When the girl was brought to the palace, the king led her to a room that was almost full of straw. He pointed to a spinning wheel and said, Get to work. You must spin this straw into gold by early morning or else. The poor miller's daughter. Of course, she could not spin straw into gold. What could she do? She could think of nothing. And in the end, she sat down and began to cry. And that's when, all of a sudden, click. The door opened and in walked a little man. Good evening, Miller's daughter, he said. Why are you crying? Because, she answered, I must spin all this straw into gold before morning, and I don't know how. Then the little man came closer to her and whispered, What will you give me if I spin it for you? Why, I, I, I'll give you my necklace, she stammered. The little man took the necklace, stood at the spinning wheel, and whirr, he spun and he spun, and by sunup, all the straw had been spun into gold. When the king arrived at sunrise, he was amazed, but the sight of all that gold made the greed for more grow in him. So the king took the miller's daughter to a larger room, filled with yet more straw, and told her that she must spin all this gold in one night. Again, the girl did not know what to do, and she sat down to cry when, click, the door opened and in walked the little man. Crying again, I see, he said. So I suppose you have to spin all this into gold too. What will you give me if I do it for you? The ring on my finger, answered the girl. So the little man took the ring, stood at the spinning wheel, and whirr, he spun and he spun, and by sunup all the straw had been spun into gold. When the king arrived, he was overjoyed at the sight, but hungry for still more gold. So he took the miller's daughter to an even larger room filled with straw and said, Spin all this in one night, and if you succeed, well then, you shall be my wife. Do you think that she's going to be able to do it? 
Let's see. The king had hardly left the room when, click, the door opened and in came the little man. What will you give me if I spin all this straw for you one more time? I have nothing left to give, the girl answered sadly. Then promise me this, said the little man. Promise me that when you are queen, you will give me your first child. The miller's daughter thought there were very little chance that she would ever be queen, and so she promised, and the little man set to work at once. Do you think that that promise is going to cause problems for her later? Probably. By morning, the gold was piled so high that it reached the ceiling. When the king arrived, he was pleased to see all the gold he wanted. He married the miller's daughter and made her queen. In a year's time, the king and queen had a fine little baby. She thought no more about the day, uh, about the little man or the promise to him. Then, one day, as she sat alone in her room rocking her baby, click, the door opened and in walked the little man, who said, Now it is time for you to give me what you promised me. The queen, filled with fear, held her baby tightly. Please, she said, I will give you all the riches of the kingdom. Only leave me my child. But the little man said, No. I would rather have a living being than all the treasures in the world. Then the queen began to weep and wail, and the little man felt pity for her. Okay, okay, I will give you this one chance, he said. In three days, if, I can guess, if you can guess my name, then you may keep your child. And then he was gone as quickly as he had come. The queen lay awake all night thinking of the names she had ever thinking of all the names she had ever heard. She sent the messenger to ride to the land, collect all the names that could be found. And when the little man came the next day, she tried all the names that she was able to think of. Alexander, Balthazar, Casper, Doolittle, Eggleston, Ferdinand, and many more. But after each, the little man only said, "That is not my name." The next day, the queen sent servants all around the kingdom to find the most unusual names. And then the little man, when the little man came, she tried them. Are you called Sheep Shanks, Roast Ribs, Snickerdoodle, Groucho, Winkle Hopper? But after each, the little man only said, that's not my name. On the third and last day, the queen was worried sick. She held her child tight and wondered what to do. When, click, the door opened and in walked, no, not the little man, but the messenger of the queen, the messenger the queen had sent in search of the names. He bowed to the queen and said, my lady, as I passed through the woods last night, I came to a high hill, and near it was a little house, and outside the house a fire was burning, and around the fire danced a funny little man, and as he hopped up and down, he sang, Today I brew, tomorrow I bake, and then the fair queen's child I'll take. No one can deny my claim, for Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The messenger left. And almost as soon as he had gone, the little man arrived. The queen greeted him by asking, Is your name Jack? That's not my name. Then are you called Harry? That's not my name. Then perhaps, said the queen, your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No! Who told you that? cried the little man. And in his anger, he stamped with his right foot so hard that it went into the ground right up into his waist. And then he stamped his other foot and went deep into the ground way over his head. And the queen and her child never feared him again. 
the end. All right, if you need to hop up and take a break, go ahead and come back. What talent does the father boast that his clever daughter has at the beginning of the fairy tale? What does the father say that she can do? Spin gold from straw. What problem does the miller's boasting make for his daughter? So what's the problem that that part causes? The daughter has to go to the palace or to the castle and prove herself to the king. What does the daughter promise the little man each night that he spins gold for her? What was the first thing that she promised him? Her necklace. And then what? Her ring. And then what? Her first child when she's queen, right? Do you think that the daughter made a good decision to promise her first child to the little man? Uh, I don't think so. When the little man goes to see the queen to make his claim for the child, the queen starts to cry and he feels pity for her. He then gives her a chance to get out of her promise. But what was it that the queen had to do in order to keep her child? Guess his name, right? How does this fairy tale end? The queen guesses his name and he gets so angry that he stomps himself into the ground. Is it a happy ending for the queen? Yeah. So what is a lesson or a moral that you might have got from this fairy tale? That's something you might have learned. Maybe that it's not a good idea to boast about a talent that someone doesn't really have. And maybe that we should be careful about the promises that we make. All right. So I want you to think about some of the characters that you heard in the read aloud. Okay. And I want you to tell me, use some adjectives to describe them. So if I were to pick Rumpelstiltskin, hmm, I might say that he was little. Um, he must have been magical if he was able to spin gold from straw. He was, he was kind of helpful, but he didn't do it in a very nice way. Right? Like he wanted something from her. And they weren't small things. I mean, he wanted her, he wanted her baby. That's not a small thing to want from somebody. So, what problem did a character in Rumpelstiltskin face because of spinning a wheel? So, what was the problem and how did it have to do with the wheel? The king said that the miller's daughter would have to spin gold from the straw, right? And how was that problem solved? Rumpelstiltskin did it, right? Yeah. In the read aloud you heard, so the king took the miller's daughter to an even larger room filled with straw and said, spin all this in one night and if you succeed, well then, you shall be my wife. Say the word succeed with me. Succeed. Can you whisper that? Succeed. Can you say it in a mouse voice? Succeed. Can you clap it out? Succeed. Okay. Succeed means to do well or to reach a goal. I knew Rory would succeed at earning a black belt in karate because she worked so hard. I'm gonna name two choices. You will decide which one will help someone be more likely to succeed. Remember to answer in complete sentences and use the word succeed in your answer. Listening carefully to the teacher or not paying attention in class. Which one's gonna help you succeed? Listening carefully to the teacher is gonna help you succeed. Practicing your violin every day or deciding not to practice at all? 
Practicing your violin every day is gonna help you succeed. Finishing your homework in front of the television or working on it carefully at home. Working on it carefully at home is going to help you succeed. Practicing free throws or hoping that you'll make a basket at the basketball game. Practicing those free throws are going to help you um, succeed. All right. Let's make sure we hit all of our learning objectives today. We reviewed the character, or we reviewed the elements of fairy tales. We described the problem and solution of the plot in this fairy tale. Um, we demonstrated an understanding of the word succeed. You are going to act out some scenes, your favorite scenes from this fairy tale. And then we will use, um, you'll use a graphic organizer to compare um, the elements in Sleeping Beauty and in Rumpelstiltskin. Okay. All right. Have a wonderful day.